Wong had an Indian cousin who for some time had been living in a more rarefied atmosphere. The Indians seemed to have been less concerned about military organization than about renouncing the world and finding enlightenment. But Nirvana isn't just down the road. To reach it is a very, very long journey, which takes a very, very long time. And to convey that fact, the Indians came up with some stupendously big numbers. Take a Raju, for example. A Raju is the distance covered by God in six months. If he travels a million kilometers in every blink of his eyelid. Or how about a pallium? A pallium is the length of time it would take me to build a cube of lamb's wool ten kilometers high if I were to lay one strand every century. Here's one I made earlier. Well, these were the sort of numbers that could have made one feel, well, small if he hadn't had a little help from his friends. Unlike the Romans, the Indians devised a system that could cope with vast numbers. They developed a different symbol for every number from one to nine. One, two, three. Or if you do them quickly, you get Arabic numerals. No, this is Arabic. This is our Hindustani. We are making it from 2,000 years ago. It's right, you know. The numbers we use today are called Arabic, but in fact, they began life here in India as early as 500 BC. But then, around 1,500 years ago, or a little longer if you're watching a repeat of this program, someone came up with a stupendous, incredible, extraordinary idea. The biggest revolution in numbers since the Sumerians invented maths. A creation that would change the world. They invented an entirely new number. And it's in here, inside this tiny 1100-year-old temple in Gwalior, northern India, is this new number. And after a 4,000 mile journey, I'm finally going to get to see it. Nick, it's locked. <laughs> <laughs> so we wait. And while we wait, I start to wonder, how was it that this new number wasn't invented sooner? It's such a simple little number that takes only a moment to say and even less to write. Ah, here he is. But once invented, it transformed the life of one in a way that would eventually change the entire world. Well, here we are. The first undisputed example of India's greatest invention. The new number. The holy grail of numbers. Zero. For the first time in human history, someone had made nothing a number. The inscription says that a garden was planted to produce flowers for the temple. And to ensure that they had enough, that garden had to be 187 by 270 hastas, about 20 acres. Well, while the Romans were using numbers to record their conquests and count dead bodies, these people were using them to make sure they had adequate supplies for their flower arrangements. You might say, what's all the fuss about? I mean, what's so wonderful about inventing a symbol that means nothing? I mean, if somebody asks me how much I've got in my hand, I can just say, well, I haven't got anything in my hand. I don't need a zero to do that. Well, a zero on its own would be nothing, obviously. But when you team zero up with one, magic started to happen.
and when they were joined by the rest of the troop, the results were spectacular. With just ten digits, the Indians could make numbers infinitely large, as well as infinitely small. Now the Romans couldn't do that. Wong had found his perfect mate in Zero, and it was a partnership that was going to change the world. Together with the rest of the team, they enabled Indian science to storm ahead. Indian astronomers, for example, were centuries ahead of the Christian worlds. Indian scientists worked out that the Earth spins on its axis and that it moves around the sun, something that opened Europe Copernicus wouldn't figure out until a thousand years later. Indian scientists also calculated the diameter of the globe and they were less than 1% off what it actually is. All this was possible because of one, zero and the rest of the troop of performing numbers. They were a sensation and their fame soon began to spread across the globe. A conflict with the numbers of Rome was bound to happen sooner or later. But for now, One and Zero and their friends made their way across the deserts of Arabia to take on one of the most sophisticated societies of the age in what is now Iraq. <laughs> When Islam was little more than a hundred years old, Baghdad was ruled by the great caliph Al-Mansur. Now, the caliph wished his people to live according to the Quran. So he set up courts and judges to apply the law of the Prophet. Now, the law of the Prophet is full of instructions that require serious mathematical calculations if they are to be carried out exactly. For example, unlike Christianity, the Quran insists that women share in any inheritance. The book says there is a share for men and a share for women, each share depending on the number of other relatives and their relation to the deceased. Working all that out required fractions and ratios, but these were people who counted on their fingers. It's not like they weren't up to complex arithmetic, it was just their number system was holding them back. But one day, there arrived in the court an ambassador from India. He had to present the great caliph with a gift of some sort. But the caliph was a man of infinite riches. It was hard to know what to give. I mean, an I Love India t-shirt was hardly going to do the job. The ambassador, however, had thought long and hard about this and had decided to present the caliph with the greatest gift he could think of. The gift of numbers. We don't know for certain exactly how Indian numerals came to be adopted in the Islamic world, but the ambassador story is my favourite. <laughs> what we do know is that Muslim scholars were bowled over by one, zero and the rest of the troop. And the most famous of these scholars was a man by the name of Al-Khwarizmi. Al-Khwarizmi. Al-Khawarizmi. Khawarizmi? Al-Khawarizmi. Al-Khawarizmi. That's right. Al-Khawarizmi and his colleagues taught the performing numerals a whole host of brand new tricks. <laughs> Quadratic <laughs> equations. <laughs> Algebra. <laughs> Hey! Reversed, logarithmic, cubic take, handstands. Hey! Uh, well, okay, I made that last one up.